G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to the plane that nobody has ever heard about. This is the LA-174 and is one of the rarest planes in War Thunder. This plane was originally attainable in I think 2012 or 2013 through a limited time grind event uh, where you had to unlock it or it would just disappear off the uh, event tree. And it appeared again in I think 2017 and I managed to pick it up then. This plane is essentially a carbon copy of the LA-15, aside with some uh, visual changes, it is practically the same. It performs the same way, it almost looks the same way, except from cockpit view I suppose. It flies the same way, same guns, same ammunition, and same battle rating. This plane sits at a comfy little, I believe 8.0, and I originally hated it. Like the LA-15, I originally despised this plane, because I just couldn't get the opportunities to get some good dogfights, and I couldn't get the opportunity to learn the guns properly. This plane has three NS-23s, which are the 23mm that you'll find on planes like the LA-9 and planes like the MiG-15s. So these 23s are quite dangerous, but they have to be used at a slow speed, and of course they require a fair amount of lead, so you do have occasions where it is going to be tough for you to aim the guns. However, the airframe that this plane has, or the, the airframe that the guns are put on, are quite capable. This airframe it has a fair amount of acceleration, in fact so much acceleration that you will rip your wings in a straight line at about 930 kilometers per hour. So you have to keep in mind that you're not going to be using that top speed very, very well. In fact, it's going to be a bit of a burden to you in some cases. This is probably the one plane where I would actually recommend use of the air brake and throttle, whereas most jets you could kind of get away without using any throttle or air brake management unless you're in a prolonged dogfight. The LA-15 and the LA-174 just pick up so much damn speed that you have to, in some cases, use your throttle to stop yourself from overshooting. And that's quite incredible because not many other jets have that until the afterburner era. So, the LA-174 and the LA-15 are both actually quite capable now because I've been getting a lot of down tiers. Well, I say down tiers and I really mean 8.3, 8.7 and uh, sort of the full down tier being all the way down to 7.0, 7.3. This plane is extremely capable when you get into a situation where you can slow your opponents down and use your superior guns to get some incredible kills. Not only that, but you have a lot of maneuverability and a lot of energy retention and of course a lot of acceleration on your side. So this plane is exceptionally good in a one versus one uh, and is fairly okay in a two versus two. The issue is where it starts to get into a cluster. If you can sort of mesh all of these planes into a little horde, you can very, very easily pick them off. And this is where the LA-15 will start to struggle because you're either managing your throttle and losing a fair amount of speed, not being able to gain it back nearly as quickly, or you're having too much speed and you're just going to overshoot everyone and sort of not make the most of it. Now, we have here a G91R and that is the German one with the missiles. He's ignoring us for now and we have a couple more enemies heading straight towards us. This German G91, the F86F and the Seahawk in the distance there. Now, Robel is on the outside and uh, whilst he's doing some stuff out there, I'm going to go for a quick head on. No dice, G91R4, so they are going to have missiles and that F86 is one of the ones with missiles. The Seahawk is also coming back and you cannot outturn a Seahawk no matter what altitude, no matter what speed. So I'm going to have to try and maybe catch him off guard and it looks like he's not really paying attention. So we're going to be closing in on him quite quickly and you can see the speed at which we are closing in even at these higher altitudes where jet engines aren't quite as strong. The LA-174 has quite a uh, crazy amount of engine power. So. In order to stay away from AIM-9Bs, I am going to keep my speed originally, and then now that Robel has distracted the Seahawk Mark 100, which also has AIM-9Bs, I'm going to go in for the shot, and it is a beautiful shot, to say the least. Now, the G91 is 2.5 kilometers and closing, and so I need to turn and deal with him. It looks like he's going to go for Robel, so I'm pretty much... Oh, never mind, he's turning back for me, which leaves him open to Robel. Now... In a two versus two situation like that, that is probably your best bet, your best circumstance, where you essentially pin some maneuver your opponent. Now, this F-86 F-30, I am stand correct corrected, that is the one without the missiles, uh, has uh, basically full committed to a head-on, and the G91R4 has been dispatched by Robel. So we have a uh, nice little area here where it's, it's looking good until 
you look in the periphery and see a Sea Vixen. Now, you don't want to get on the wrong side of the Sea Vixen, and of course, whilst it doesn't have guns, you do not want to be in front of one. You have to be either behind it or going head on. And even if you're going head on, like this F86 is just sort of full committing to everything, uh, you could still end up on the wrong side because someone once fired rockets at me, and needless to say, it was quite embarrassing. So, the F86 F30 has basically wasted himself here, and it is just about a done deal. It's only a matter if I can get my guns on target, and of course I do. And the Chad plane, the Chad of Chads, is uh, on their way in, the Javelin. Now, you can... I, I think the Javelin can actually outrun you, but the acceleration on the Javelin is so poor that you can catch them in a short distance. And of course, Robel is all over this Javelin, because... My god, once you have to turn in that thing, you start to lose a lot of speed, and the LA-15 and the 174 are both going to have your ass. So, speaking of having your ass, the, uh, the Javelin is not looking very good, and you can see I'm already redlining here. I'm actually getting to a point where I should not be uh, putting some speed on. I, I need to actually cool the speed off, and uh, that's a nice little kill right there for the, uh, I think it was the Demon there, or the F-11. So... You can see that in a 2 versus 2, the LA-174 and the LA-15 actually fare quite well. Uh, but in a sort of multi-enemy situation where you have to constantly switch your attention, you sometimes will find yourself overshooting in cases like uh, a 1 versus 1 where an enemy decides that they want to have some fun and, and come in and, and spoil your fun. So, we're dealing here with another enemy trickling in one by one. We have a Meteor, and the Meteor is going to go for a quick head-on. I'm going to spray a little bit. It's a very last-minute head-on, which is super rough and super dodgy. But it's a Reaper, and I'm pretty sure this guy may have just bought it to play Cass and maybe bomb some bases. So it's really not looking good for the Reaper. The Reaper is starting to really struggle against, like, five enemies, uh, as you would. And I am basically looking to go in and secure my kill. It looks like the Reaper is very, very damaged, and I might actually just pick this up because he's he's very, very slow. He decides to roll over, and that is kill number, I think, three for me. That's, that's pretty neat, you know, having the ability to sort of deal that much damage with some deadly guns, but you just have to get your aim on straight away. It's, it's one of those planes where you have to learn the guns, and learning the guns is one of the most frustrating parts. Like... Forget the stock grind. The stock grind on this thing was piss easy compared to some other planes that I've ground out stock. Um, but my god, the guns on this thing will be easily the most frustrating thing. It is very good, however, when you have uh, an Itonda that decides that they want to turn like this. The Itonda is a lot heavier than the uh, LA-15 and the LA-174. And so having the Itonda sort of sit and do this crap is... Uh, is just, just free Silver Lions and free research. It's it's kind of incredible how many people throw away their plane. The Itonda has a lot of speed. It's almost as fast as the Hawker Hunter, and yet some people decide that they want to turn fight in it. And for me, that just baffles the mind. It's one of those things that you just look at and go, why? Because there are so many other ways that you could have used the plane. And that kind of brings me to one of the main things about War Thunder. Like, War Thunder just is one of those games with such a high skill curve that maybe some people don't know any better. And uh, that's what this channel's all about. So if you guys enjoyed this sort of stuff, do uh, do stick around, because I want to I want to grow the channel, okay? It, I want to get to my 100,000 subscribers, I want to get to my silver play button, and of course, I cannot do that without the help of you. And we're halfway there, so I'm very happy about that. Anyway, moving on to the next match here, I thought, well, Surely the enemies kind of fed themselves to me. I'm going to try and gun for a little bit more. Maybe I can get a little bit more uh, better matches, like better dogfights. Let's have a look. Well, I've decided to put my plane into a climb because I believe that that is the best way to use the LA-174's uh, engine power. You're just going to overspeed if you drive, or drive, fly in a straight line. And so if you put yourself into a climb, you're actually spending your energy a little bit better. Now, I have three enemies, maybe four, that will appear in the, on the horizon very shortly. A Seahawk, an F-84G, I think there'll be a Sea Vixen, and a Sea Venom. Now, the Sea Venom is easily the least threatening target. The Seahawk is one of the most threatening, and the F-84G is also quite threatening. The J-29 that has appeared here is also very threatening, but I just need to keep my speed, and the only thing that'll really be able to touch me is that Seahawk. 
provided that I don't turn and don't mess up anything. Now the uh, Sea Vixen here is looking very sad because I've shorn off the side of his wing and it looks like the Seahawk is way too far to be within reach of his aim nines. The F-84G it has basically no energy to keep up with the likes of the LA-174 and the Seahawk is making his way back so this presents me with one obvious target here, the J-29. Yep. You guessed it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to go back to the Seahawk. Go for a quick head-on. You see how high I have to lead those shots? My god. That was a nice kill. And uh, the LA-200, who is morbidly obese, decides that uh, uh, congestive heart failure is his thing and dies. So that leaves me against four enemies, and there's a Banshee up at altitude with me, so I do have to be careful. There is an F-84, uh, F-84, I think an F-86, sort of uh, vibing with me, but... The J29 and the Sea Venom are going to keep you plenty busy for now, and the uh, friendly there is not going to be of enormous help. So, having a look here at the J29, have a look at how easy it is to stay above him. What you're doing here is you're using your energy, you're using that acceleration to just stay above him and stay out of reach of his guns. I've had to actually drop the throttle and pop flaps to get this uh, sort of attempt at a reversal. But you know what? If I had landed my shots, that would have been a kill right there and then. But at the end of the day, if I can go around one more time, then there's no issue, right? And that's exactly what I've done. I've just set my plane up in a way that I can re-attempt and just go again. And you can see the J29 has decided to go into a vertical, and that gives me plenty of opportunity to miss all of my shots. But like I said, I've done the hard work, I've done the setup, and I should be able to reap the reward from this, provided that my shots make the target. And the J29 here, look how slow he is. This is surely going to make a very nice easy kill. And lo and behold, the wing falls off. So, with that dogfight out of the way, I've noticed that the enemies have all decided to go to the deck. And that's a great idea for me. That's a, that's a really, really good thing. Except this Seahawk here, which is posing, I would say, the biggest threat. Because of those AIM-9Bs, you have to be really careful of who you're going to dogfight. And whilst you can, like, dodge them fairly easily, I seriously don't want to risk that, and I don't really want him to fire, or I don't even want him to be in a position where he can take shots. And it turns out it's an FGA-6 anyway, and doesn't have missiles. So I just have to be careful of his maneuverability and his energy retention. He has gone down into a uh, dive, and he will be picking back up, but hopefully I can roll around quick enough for him to basically not get onto me and it's so so close he decides to bugger off at the last second and that could have been anyone's game that was really really risky and really really stupid of me so what do i do i'm gonna pick on the weakest link which is the sea venom and when the sea venom basically ends up going down to the deck to escape me i'm gonna turn my attention back to the seahawk since it is the largest threat so Rolling over, the Seahawk is right there, and the Sea Venom looks like he might be coming back soon, but they're basically now all on the same plane of existence, and soon that existence will be cut short by some 23mm cannons. The Seahawk here coming back through, and the Sea Venom is making its way downtown, flying slow, and flying uh, away from my 23mm. So, we have the F-84G. He's come back. So... I have to make a quick decision on who to attack next, and it looks like the Seahawk is going to be dinner here. Closing into 700 meters is when I'm going to probably open up fire, but he decides to dip away at the last second. The Sea Venom decides it wants to die, and that is a solid choice there. F-84G coming back in, and uh, I ripped my flaps, but it's okay. I have plenty of maneuverability in this thing, enough to deal with the F-84G, and of course, enough uh, altitude and energy to deal with the Seahawk. The F2H decides he wants to come in, and I can cut that life short pretty quickly with some 23mm cannons. That is one threat dealt with quite easily. Now, I have realised, well I haven't realised at this point, but I am out of ammunition. This plane does have a limited supply, and it is, uh, it is quite limited actually. You might think that it is pretty, pretty decent, and you'll be right in some circumstances, but Honestly, I always wish I could have a little bit more ammo, and uh, in this case, it's it's just a wish that'll never come true. So, the Seahawk here is going to get a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a spook. So, if you can't if you can't be the killer, at least pretend to be the killer, and that's exactly what the Seahawk does. Accidentally plants himself into the ground and gives the F30 the kill. So, happy days, I suppose. 
screaming ducka 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 is really the way to go when you don't have ammunition and you know what i have no regrets <laughs> so after a fresh load of ammunition and a new rip of the flaps i have an enemy that is uh, sort of in the far distance but the j29 is also quite close now the J29 has been killing AAA, and I am fearful that he might switch to things that actually cost tickets, like pillboxes. So, I'm going to go for a quick little head-on here. J29A, I should have zero problems with this thing, because it is so fat. And have a look at how much he's struggling. The LA-174 just has so much energy that it can actually, in some cases, dogfight with sabers. The only thing that limits it, really, is its lack of top speed. Its, its grip speed and its lack of top speed just really hamper the thing. But you know what, when you're in a down tier like this, you just have so many damn opportunities to shit on your opponents. In a full up tier, it's not quite as simple. You have to really pick your opponents, and you have to make sure that you separate the enemies in individual spots. You can't be having a 2 versus 2 or a 3 versus 3 because you might actually find that you'll end up in a situation where you just cannot cope with more than one or two enemies at your uh, uh, around you. So trying to lure your opponents away is a really, really great tactic. Sitting on the periphery and maybe helping out some uh, friends in need is the best way to go when you're in a full up team. The LA-15 and the LA-174 are absolute crackers of a plane. They are just so damn good. And all this time, I've just been unwilling to learn the guns and unwilling to deal with the quirks of the plane. And you know what, once you do learn to do those things, you have a really, really good time, and this is something I've been missing out on him for such a long time. The only one reason why I really hated the LA-15, apart from the guns, was because it constantly got up tiered back in the day against the likes of the CL-13 and the F-86F2, and was just superseded by everything. It just didn't have the speed to compete, but now with everything sort of not spreading out a little bit more, but... A few more options popping up, a lot more down tiers being more frequent with the advocate of the supersonic jets. Uh, it's been a much more pleasant experience flying the likes of the LA-174. Maybe I'll have to go back and spade the uh, LA-15. But like I said, once you learn the guns, it really is an easy time. And learning the guns is not something that I have uh, done quite proficiently, as you can see. You will still miss shots, and you will still get a situation that just makes you want to tear your hair out. But I suppose that's just War Thunder for you. Have a look at that. I've missed two absolute sitters that I would have had in just about any other plane. But you have to learn the quirks of the gun. And I've done it for the English Electric Lightning. I've done it for the MiG-19. I've done it for the MiG-21s. Why would I not do it for the LA-15? Because this thing has performance out the arsehole and has the sheer ability to just club everything. It is such a fantastic plane and it is such a good thing to have in the game and it's a real shame that no one really knows about this thing no one really plays it there are a couple of people that might be playing the LA-15 there are a couple of people that might be playing the LA-174 from time to time but this isn't the meta plane and I really think people should be picking it up a lot more anyway ladies and gents thank you very much for watching this video tell me what you think Give me your opinions, and uh, if you guys want to see the special poster that I bought, I bought one of the signed posters. I am fucking thrilled, so thank you so much for providing me with the opportunities to do that. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.